Good afternoon. My story starts today on February 7th, 2013, at 10.45 in the morning. That morning I was riding my bicycle to work, like I've done for the last 25 years. But that day, I was run over by a car. My head hit the ground, broke my neck, and bruised my spinal cord. That's left me tetraplegic. What does that mean? Well, that means that I'm paralyzed from my chest down. I cannot move my legs. It also means that this hand no longer functions. I can move my arm, luckily. This hand, I can move, but it really doesn't work very well. I can't pick anything up with it, but it does move. So you can see that that day significantly changed my life. But it didn't end my life. While I was in the hospital, I researched quite a bit, and I discovered a technology that's called functional electrical stimulation. And functional electrical stimulation is something that I'd like to discover with you today. And the first thing I'd like to do is to show you what electrical stimulation can do to someone's muscles. So I'll invite my, my colleague, Amin Metini, to come join us to do a, an experiment. Amin is connecting a stimulator to two electrodes that I've just stuck to my, to my legs here, to my quadriceps. What's going to happen is a small current will activate the nerves in my leg that will contract my quadriceps and move my leg. So let's go, go ahead with this, I mean, voila. One more time, just to make sure we didn't fake it. <laughs> Voila. So when I speak about, thank you very much, I mean, when I speak about electrical stimulation, this is what I'm talking about. But that's not very functional. It's not functional because it doesn't serve as anything except to show you that I can move my leg. Functional electrostimulation is when you stimulate the muscles in such a way that you accomplish something with them. Hmm, what would I want to accomplish with my muscles? Well, you've guessed it, ride my bike again. So I spoke to an expert in this area. His name is Kenneth Hunt, and he gladly taught me how to do this. The signals from my brain no longer work. Well, they, my brain works, but the signals don't arrive to my muscles. So what we can do, as you saw, is we can stimulate those muscles electrically. And if we do that intelligently, I can lay back in a tricycle, use that box to stimulate my, my legs, and push the pedals of a bicycle. And that's what you're seeing in the animation behind me. And it works quite well. And in fact, learning that from Kenneth motivated us to build our own bicycle, or a tricycle, I should say. And the timing was perfect, because in 2016, there was the first ever Olympics for disabled people who use technology. And one of the events was functional electrical stimulation, FES cycling. And that's what you're looking at behind me, is the day that I was able to ride my bike again and compete in that particular uh, event. The bike's a pretty special bike to me. It's my first bike since being handicapped. I built it with a lot of love and care. It only weighs 13 kilos. Uh, we built it in pure carbon fiber. I said, if I'm going to build a bike, I'm going to build a good one. And the other thing that's really special to me on this bike is I was able to get it dedicated by Eddie Merckx and Raymond Polidor. 
For those of you who are young, you may not understand those names, but those of you who follow cycling, you'll understand the significance of that. So this bike is not only near and dear to me, it's a collector's item, and it will stay on my shelf for a very long time. However, there is a disadvantage with this bike. It's the fact that it's low to the ground that makes it pretty hard for me to transfer, to get down there, and particularly to get back up. So it's not very convenient to ride every day. So we developed another system, something that we can use indoors. So even if it rains, I can go riding. It's even better than before. But in particular, I can stay in my wheelchair. I can just drive up to the, to the device. It works exactly like the other one. You see the electrodes on my legs. You see all my quadriceps, on my hamstrings, eschew, and also in my, my buttocks, in my fissier. All that helps me to pedal, but it also helps me to build my muscles. Not to be pretty, but to protect myself from pressure sores, escar, which is something that's very, very important for us. Us meaning those who sit in wheelchairs all day. So this activity doesn't only just bring me pleasure, it's very important for my health. And for anyone who sits in a wheelchair all day, they should be doing this. And we're doing all possible for us to be able to make that possible for them. And if you think about this, and we have a bit, bicycling's not the only thing we can do. There's actually something even simpler, and that's rowing. And here you're looking at our new sports room, where we're putting all of these devices together and offering people to come work out. And you see a rowing machine that it's extremely simple because it's just moving back and forward. Attaching the electrodes, as you can see, to Julian's legs. Julian's my friend. By the way, you wouldn't know it by looking at him, but he's tetraplegic. Look at the size of his muscles. It's pretty impressive. He does a lot of bike riding. Well, FES bike riding. But he's also starting to do a lot of rowing. Now, there is an advantage to the rowing. The rowing offers also cardiovascular workout because you're able to pull and work your upper body at the same time. So it's a complementary workout to the bike. And it's a very fun one to do also. So why stop there? Let's continue. What other things can we do? Well, here's Julian again. And he's in a system that's walking. So he's in a harness that supports his weight. And then we can actually lower and raise this harness so that we can have weight on his legs, which could have certain advantages. And you see the electrodes on his legs, and they move his legs in a walking motion, just like they moved for the other exercises. This particular one has advantages because he's upright. In the upright position, we're not in very often. And that position helps for our transit, and also for our bones, to strengthen our bones with the weight on them. So these are all complementary exercises that we've put together into a sports room that we offer to people who need them. The other device that I like to show you now that uses FES, it's not for sport, but it's a little bit more practical. This device, is a glove. It's a glove based on FES. What you will see, I hope it's running behind me, it is, is that it has several electrodes because the hand is a, is a complicated tool and you need many electrodes to be able to, to move all of your fingers. The nice thing about this glove is that it's wireless. And the interesting about this glove is that it can be used to make this hand work again, to be able to pick up objects, to be able to cut meat again. 
to be able to do those everyday tasks. Thank you. I underline that fact because for us, us meaning tetraplegics, using our hands is much more important than walking. Imagine that. So this type of advance in technology is something that excites me, of course, but I think it's going to excite a lot of people because, for example, this glove can also be used for stroke victims who aren't necessarily uh, tetraplegic, but hemiplegic, and they often lose the use of one of their hands. Here again, this type of glove can be used. So, with that, I would like to leave you with just an image of the people who are behind all of this work. It's in front of a sports room that we just opened last week in Lyon. It's the first ever uh, fitness room for motor handicapped individuals in France. So we're very proud of this. And hopefully you'll be seeing one coming soon to Clermont-Ferrand, because our objective is just that, is to transport this knowledge to other places all throughout France and eventually perhaps the world. So thank you very much for your time and listening. <laughs>